this is an unusual day a sunday in december without a bears game to watch but the coach is looking forward to accomplishing some things on the monday night or at detroit genie's out in the audience to collect all the quarterback questions i'm sure and mike's special guest is the newest of the quarterbacks doug flutie who triggered those great plays last sunday And coach, uh, another Monday night game. This is the third one for you. Of course, the last one wasn't the greatest of experiences, but how do you feel about the Monday night? Well, I think Detroit's really going to let it all hang out. I do. Mm -hmm. I think the party blitzes a lot more, John, and they're going to go with Chuck Long, their rookie quarterback and uh, offense, and probably try to cause some excitement up and get the fans into the game. But I think we're ready for it. We've had a good week, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We're just uh, starting to hone our edges for the playoffs. Okay, and we'll be back with the Mike Ditka Show right after this time. Yeah. Is, is going to start at quarterback. What's your thinking going into this game? How are you going to handle it? How much will Flutie play? Doug will probably play about half the game, and mm -hmm. probably Mike will play half right now. That's my plans, and I, I intend to stay with him. I kind of stay with what I plan. I planned something last week, and I stayed with it, and I intend to stay with what I'm going to do this week, and then next week I have something else planned, and then... You we'll do? See. What do you have planned next week? Uh, well, we're going to go to Dallas and beat the Cowboys. Oh. <laughs> going to decide on your quarterback sit by the playoffs as to a number one guy who's going to play all the time or might you go with two quarterbacks through the playoffs well I think we're going to go with three quarterbacks through well, the playoffs now how many of them play we just decide but it'll be uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, no, I'm not, I didn't say that to be funny because I really at this point we're going to make a decision and I think it'll be a, the decision that's best for our football team mm -hmm. period you know and uh, when it's made, I think everybody will enjoy it. But do you believe that you have a better chance in the playoffs if you decide on one and go with him, or no. would you? No. No, I don't think so. I just think uh, it's a great position, and quarterbacks are wonderful. They get paid a lot of money, but let's not river the position too much. We can put anybody in there, and they'll do it. Maybe. <laughs> okay, that's the latest on the Doug Flutie. Mike Tomczak situation. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here of the game last week. And uh, there was some passing, but there was some a great running by a, a lot of individuals. Tom Sanders did a good job. Well, everybody ran good, but I think, John, when everybody runs good, it's because the offensive line is blocking good. I, I'll say right now that Tampa Bay is really having problems and mm -hmm. not playing very well, and we can't get too excited about what happened. But yet we needed it. It was a shot in the arm for us on our offense, and the kids blocked hard and played well. And I think you're right about the offensive line. Time you rushed for 270 yards or whatever it was, you're getting some blocking now. Here was when Tom Zack came back in in the second half. Well, we did a sprint out action. Actually, this is the same type of action we used uh, when when uh, Doug throws his touchdown later. Mm -hmm. But it's it's the same idea. Willie Mate ran a great route. Mike did a good job in staying with him and found him and. Uh, Good, good play. Well, this was a game where you got good play from the offense, the defense, yeah. and the special teams. You've only just seen the beginning. This kid's going to make a lot of good things happen. Lou Barnes. And you, you stuck with him. He had some rough times uh, early in the season, and uh, you, you knew he was going to eventually come through, didn't you? I, I just think that Lou Barnes is really, he's a big play guy, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he's had some problems holding on to the ball, but it's not because, you know, he, he just trying too hard running. He's going to be all right. Now we were talking a punt back for a touchdown during the playoffs. Okay, sounds good. Now, we've got some more special teams, and, of course, your number one draft choice, Neil Anderson, keeps doing well. He's outstanding. I, you know, this is just one of the great plays he made. He made six tackles in the uh, game. Now, he didn't come in until really the end of the game as far as offense. Or is he going to get a little more playing time? On John, what happened, is, you know, he's got a bad hand. He's yes. got a real bad left hand, and he didn't think he could carry the ball. And then I think after he saw Tom Sanders run a few times, his he hand got, got well a lot better. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> How's the injury situation? Uh, we're fine. This is the best we'll go into a football game in a long time. We've got a few bumps and bruises, but nothing really serious. Okay, let's go out into the audience and get some questions. Uh, Jeannie, have you found a prospective question? I can't believe this. I don't see a hand. There they are. I have a question. Sorry, Mike, but it won't be a tough one. Um, if it, will there, is there anything that you can do in terms of 
calling the plays in terms of game strategy with Doug Flutie at quarterback as opposed to Mike Tomczak? I don't think we plan our game that way. Uh, we, we try to do the same things, Jeannie. I just think that, you know, that you might use one guy if he's a little better rolling out. You might use it a little bit more, but it's all in a game plan, and we're not really going to specify this or that. You know, we're going to, first of all, you know, it, it's fine, but you analyze the football game. We ran the ball 37 times, I believe, for 204. That's the key to what we do. If we can run the football, we can pass it, and we can score points. If we can't run it, we're going to have a lot of problems because our best passes come off play action anyways. So it wouldn't be a big change with either one, really. Okay, your question. Mike, um, I'd like to know how many times you do that motorcycle commercial of you imitating Jim. <laughs> <laughs> He's a natural, how can you ask? One. <laughs> <laughs> now, we did, a, we did a lot of different scenes and they put them all together, but it, it really, it was shot very quick. It really was. We went right through it, it you know. I'm, I'm an old hat at this now. <laughs> Mike, I got a question for you. You think we can put uh, four men in the Pro Bowl this year than we did last year? No, I don't think we will. I, don't, I think we'll put less in this year, and I think for the reason is the Giants are playing so well, the Redskins are playing so well, the Rams are playing so well, the 49ers have some great all pros. I, I would think that they don't, they're not looking at the Bears. Right? We're, we're kind of a forgotten team. You know, they think that we're lucky to be where we're at. Uh, but we will have some in there because we have some great all pros, and we have some that should be in there that won't get in there. You like being forgotten? Well, I think we're being forgotten a little bit for a lot of reasons. For one thing, I think a lot of people are jealous of the way we do play. They could put our whole defense in there and not miss a beat. Mike, I got a question. In Atlanta and in Tampa Bay, we wore the home uniforms. How come? Uh, no, uh, so, because they want to wear white jerseys. Atlanta, uh, one, they wear white jerseys at home most of the time. Tampa wears white jerseys at home up until the month of December, I think, and then mm -hmm. they go to orange. The home team has a choice, and then the, the Bears have to right. do whatever. We have to wear the opposite. Um, I'm a teacher, and I'm always accused of having pets. How do you manage to avoid getting accused of the same thing with your three quarterbacks? I don't mind it anymore. It's mm -hmm. okay. Let them. If I have a pet, that's fine. There's always a reason for you having a pet, isn't there? Yeah. It's usually the guy who works the hardest, isn't it? Oh, uh, you got it. I ain't. <laughs> I'm old fashioned. Works the this hardest. young man looks like a hard worker to me. <laughs> How do you feel about when McMahon got off the team because of his shoulder? How, when he got off the team? Well, I feel that, you know, the main thing right now with Jim, my thoughts are concerned that he has the surgery and the surgery is a success and the rehabilitation is a success and we can carry on his career. Okay, let's switch to defense now. We've got some videotape of the defense which came up with another uh, sterling performance and Steve McMichael recovered this James Wilder fumble. Well, you know, in the game... John, the defense has a lot of unique ways of grading, and I think in all the grades this week when they came out, when I looked at them, they give them points for certain things. I think the highest graded was uh, Al Harris, who replaced Otis. Really? And I think the second was Steve McMichael, Perry was right up there, and Dorson. Those uh, guys came out really the highest of all people. Okay, here comes a uh, historical moment for Gary Fensick. He set a new Bear career record with his 38. <laughs> Another great example, John, of what great coaching can do for a player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say one thing. He was in the right spot at the right time, and you guys put him in the right spot. Okay, here is a Young going back, and uh, Dave Dewerson comes up with a sack. He follows through. You know, I really, uh, I really think Steve Young is one heck of a football player. I just think it's very unfortunate right now what's happening to him. And I hope that it doesn't uh, really cause him to have a confidence breakdown because he is a good, great athlete and, and to have the things happen right now, there's, I mean, he's just not getting any protection, John. You know, that, when you said the confidence breakdown, when you took, when you chewed out Tom Zack and then took him out, were you planning at that point to put him back in the second half or did yeah, oh you yeah. think oh about yeah. it at the half and no, say, no, hey, the, I should put him back no, in? No, 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 no. The whole thing was set. It was, mm -hmm. Doug was going in the second quarter and I was coming back with Mike in the third and Doug in the fourth. Regardless, I didn't care what the score of the game was. Mm -hmm. We were going to do that. And uh, that was the plan, so. Okay, we'll be back with Doug Flutie in just a moment. Now let's welcome our special guest, number two, Doug Flutie. Yeah. Doug, 
Doug, I know that I know that this isn't exactly new to you because you were a real a hero and, and a, a star back in in, uh, in Boston when you were at BC. But this has got to be something that's been really all of a sudden for just to, to mushroom and blossom like it's this. It's amazing how things have uh, just turned around in the past month or two mm -hmm. months and uh, go from sitting out, probably sitting out a season, mm -hmm. to possibly getting on the Bears, but signing a contract mm -hmm. for next year, to signing a contract for this year, to having the opportunity to play in a ball game, and now, you know, have the opportunities coming down towards the playoffs. And uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunities that have been brought mm -hmm. to me. How, how good was it to, uh, aside from getting the points, just to, to do something with the players in an actual game and, and have some success? That was important to me, as well as a lot of fun. You know, I was out on the field. I enjoyed myself getting out on the field and, and having a chance to run the offense. But it was important to me because it, it's a good step in the right direction as far as earning the respect of your teammates. Mm -hmm. And the guys can see you on the practice field. They can see you working hard. But, uh, you know, there's nothing to replace getting out on the field and doing a good job. Do you have any... Uh, what if you were in Tom's act spot? How would you feel? I, I tell you, Tough I would question. feel very confident in my own abilities, and wouldn't let outside things bother me. Say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm the number one quarterback. I know it in my mind, and that uh, I can get the job done and go out and do it. Or, you know, that's the mm -hmm. approach that you have to have to it. I see. And in, in my situation, my approach is. I have an opportunity in front of me. I, when I'm given that opportunity, I have to try to make the best of it. Okay, let's take a look. You, make it, you made the best of it uh, last week. We're going to look at some of the highlights. First, your touchdown run, which uh, you got a nice block from Tom Fair. I'll tell you, the, that was more than anything, it was a big confidence booster for me. It was a fairly easy play. I rolled out to the right. Tom Fair threw a mm -hmm. great block to get me into the end zone. And more than anything, this was something that got my confidence up and ready to go back out the field again. First NFL touchdown, then uh, the long pass to, uh, to Willie Galt, in which you threw it. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, Willie can run. Willie can run, but the free safety got out of the middle of the field, and it gave us an opportunity for a big play, and I just tried to lay it out there and let Willie go after the ball. And you hit him right on the button. Then comes the uh, touchdown pass, which is the one I think that really... Uh, was a sensational play, not only by yourself, but by Walter Payton. Walter comes down with an exceptional catch here. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, he, had, <laughs> he had gotten behind the guy. I had gotten outside, and Walter had gotten behind him. I was just trying to lay it up over the top, mm -hmm. not figuring on getting a touchdown, but maybe having a chance at it. And Walter just adjusted to the ball real well and pulled it down and got down in bounds. And you had to keep looking and looking to make sure it was in bounds, whether he caught it. You didn't know for I a while. I didn't know for until sure crowd until crowd. I saw the uh, arms go up of the referee. And I wasn't sure whether he was in bounds, whether he was out of the end zone, <laughs> whether he caught the ball or what. But uh, I was pretty excited about it. Okay, uh, we're going to... We're going to go out into the audience now for some questions, and a special question, because we, we mentioned Walter Payton throwing the ball into the stands. Jeannie, uh, have you found somebody? In order to appreciate this fully, we're going to look at this pass again, the one we just saw. Doug Flutie to Walter Payton. A great pass. This is the ground level of, uh, shot of it. Just over the shoulder, Walter Payton making a sensational catch. And where did that ball go? You know, Walter's been throwing the ball into the stands regularly, and up it went. Well, we lost it for just a minute. And then our alert cameraman ran into the stands and found Mark Polivka treasuring that ball. And Walter Payton felt kind of bad about having thrown it up there. Kid. Now, the ball means a lot to Dougie, and, uh, you know, for him to give it up like that uh, shows that uh, there's still some nice people in this world. I just wasn't thinking when I threw it up. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't thinking, but our nice person showed up, Mark Polivka. There he is. Mark, you are going to be asked, you're going to be asked that question athletes always have to answer. How did it feel? <laughs> well, I, when, the, when Walter threw the ball up, I, I got out of my chair and I said, this ball's got a chance to get there. And, and it kept coming and coming and coming and <laughs> hit me right in the hands. I, I don't know if that's concentration or not. But, uh, well, why don't you do what you came here to do and present it to Doug? Doug, uh, I have a question first. Oh, yeah. Okay. How does it feel to play in Chicago and, and have a restaurant 
after your name in New York. <laughs> it could cause problems. I think I'll run up quite a bill if this team ends up in New York playing the Giants. <laughs> Come All on right. up here, Mark. He's going to give you the uh, football, and it's the one that you wanted, and you thought you'd lost uh, because Walter threw it in, and Mark has Welcome been to kind enough to get it. Thank you very much. In return, Coach Dick I and Walter Payton have signed the ball that we have in the back and we're going to give to him. Okay, in great. Replace. Okay, Mark, we're still going to football. Okay, we still have a minute for some questions, Jeannie. Doug, I want to ask you just one question. All the athletes that we know are getting signed for all of this big money and so on and so forth. Is an athlete of your stature willing to take less money to play on a team of the status of the Bears? Well, considering that I took, uh, let's see. You did it, didn't One-tenth of the money I was earning a year in the USFL. In fact, the total would be about one-thirtieth of the money I received in the USFL for one year play to play with the Chicago Bears. But um, it was important to me to get an uh, organization that uh, was run well and to have an opportunity. Like Coach said, Steve Young is a heck of a quarterback. And it's a shame that he's in a position right now where he can't show that. Okay, Jeannie, one more question. Just take one more. One more quick one. Okay, you, sir, stand up on your chair. You'll be taller. Um, do you really care if the guys fool around on the defense on the sidelines? Do you really fool around if they're fool around? Well. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I don't know exactly what you mean, but I know one thing, they won't be lateraling the ball around on the field anymore. <laughs> With that, we'll take a timeout, and we'll be back. Mike, uh, we're going to go out for some more questions, but first I have two things to ask you about. The Giants, they have the edge on you right now. How much of a disadvantage will it be if you end up having to go to New York? None. None. None at all. Yeah. And the other one is Chuck Long. Here's a rookie quarterback going to be starting against your defense. I would say that, uh, you know, Bears traditionally have done well against rookie quarterbacks. You throw everything at him but the kitchen sink. Uh, yeah, but I don't think we really played against uh, a rookie that's really as talented as Chuck. And, mm -hmm. and again, I think the team has to help him, John. If they don't help him up front, he's not going to have a good day. But if he gets some time, he's got a good arm. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, you want to... Sure. Good... Let's do this quick. Lots of quick questions. Mr. Flutie, and after your performance last Sunday, I think you deserved the mister. Uh, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. And Mike, I'm getting anxious, getting anxious for next year. I can see McKinnon and Galt under some mighty long tosses. Yeah. You said it all. Mike, I heard you were making a movie, and if so, when would it be coming out? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of rumors going on, but uh, there's nothing definite, really. Mike, uh, we're going to be going up against some uh, good defenses. Um, Rams, Giants. Are our quarterbacks going to have any trouble audibilizing? I don't think so. I think we're, we're kind of limited what we do right now, but they'll do a good job. You know, when we, when we read the blitz, they know how to get out of it. They do a good job. Uh, Mike, um, with Doug Flutie and his quarterback, are you going to go for more and or longer pass plays? Well, you saw the pass that he threw to Willie, and the ball was in the air, what, 60 yards? Oh, about 60 yards. Yeah. Which we don't like to throw it that far, but uh, if you got somebody that <laughs> can run that far, and he can throw it that far, it's pretty good. Mike or Doug, I was wondering uh, if you know or who you would like to play for the Super Bowl. Doug, do you have a uh, preference? Or you... I have no preference. I'd just like to play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Denver. Denver. <laughs> Mike would like to play Denver. I got a question for Doug. Doug, I'd like to know, um, would, did you like making a touchdown yourself or throwing it? I think the touchdown pass meant a lot more to me. And, uh, you know, the rollout was, was fun for me to run into the end zone, but the pass meant a lot more. Okay, that's it. We're all out of time for uh, this week's uh, Mike Ditka show. I want you to be sure to stay tuned for the NFL Today, which is coming up next. Uh, Doug, good luck in the game Monday night. Mike, bring home another one. The Bears 12-2, and two, shooting for 13-2, no sweat. We'll see you next week. Just a kid. So was I. You've worked.
it's long and hard to get there. When the time comes, you hope you're ready. You may Because the car that has had the most trouble-free record in its class now has 16-valve performance and a whole new look that puts it in a class by itself. The roomy Camry. What more could you ask for? Well, maybe a Camry wagon. Come on over, baby. Whole lot of dealing going on. Uh, who could ask for anything more? See your Toyota dealer. <laughs> the Mike Ditka Show was sponsored by Toyota. See your Toyota dealer. By Aaron's, the easy choice for tough customers. Buy Budweiser, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by American National Bank. We're the bank for business. Mike's guests receive a quality Zenith product. Zenith Quality TV.